what's going on guys service tech tips welcome to another video of my channel in today's video we're going to be taking apart an acer aspire es1 711 p1 uv or in short es1 711 series it's an aspire uh, we're actually going to be installing this wd blue 500 gigabyte ssd and the 16 gigabyte kit of uh, team group and memory so let's go ahead and get started so, so the first thing you're going to need is a phillips head screwdriver i'm just going to be using this ifixit kit this is my not so good as you can see, not so good iFixit kit. So let's go ahead and get started. There's a lot of screws we gotta take out. You can thank Acer for that. Acer is probably one of the worst laptop brands out there. Now what I do recommend is when you do this, lay them out. But since there's so many and they're all the same size, I'm just gonna throw them in one place, so please don't judge. Alright guys, it looks like I got all the screws removed. Um, yeah, I'm just going to double check because you don't want to be pulling on this when the screw is not fully removed. So the way to remove the uh, bottom panel is just pull up on this corner. A lot of these laptops, you're going to need a spudger, but these Acer makes it a little easier to get into. Some of their models just have the ability to pull up on them in each corner. And then what you do is you want to like run your fingers under it and then pull up. Don't do like really hard pulls. Do quick pulls. That way it pops the clips and then you can do the same everywhere else. And then you're in. Oh, that's... <laughs> that's nice good job acer so we're in we're gonna be upgrading the ram we're not going to be upgrading the ram so this is something i was not aware of i probably should have looked in windows and noticed that it only takes one slot not a huge deal i can just put one eight gigabyte stick in there the world is not going to end this ram, this laptop only has one uh, slot for ram so if you're watching this before you tear it down i do apologize for that that's just something that happens especially with laptops because they don't always explain it i swear it said I, 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 check, I check, when you check the task manager, I'll put something on screen now. When you check the task manager, it'll show you where the uh, the amount of slots that are being used. That's not always correct, but it's usually correct. And it said two, uh, it said one of two is filled. So that's why I figured if I got two sticks, it wouldn't be a problem. But that's still no problem. We're gonna be upgrading it to eight gigabytes. Anyway, uh, 16 gigs isn't really needed anyway. This is a Pentium, so the eight gigabytes will probably do just fine. Uh, so we're just going to be putting one 8 gigabyte stick in and I'll use the other 8 gigabyte stick for another thing. They don't need to be paired. They're best to be paired. We could also just keep it as a spare if this one ever fails for whatever reason. You just want to slide it in. There's two clips here. Slide it in at an angle, then push down and it'll clip and then your RAM's in. Now, as far as the hard drive, it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is pull it out. By that, I mean remove the cable and there might be uh, basically adhesive holding it on, which is supposed to help, but it never really does. There's a Seagate Momentus. These drives have a very high failure rate. So if your laptop has a Seagate drive and it hasn't failed yet, I recommend you replace it now. What you need to do with the drive cages is you just need to remove these four screws on this laptop. A lot of laptops will have them on the side, which it looks like you could have done that. Um, and these are two separate pieces. Sometimes the drive cages will be all one piece. Um, I can actually show you an example. So as I was saying, all the, sometimes the drive cages can be all one piece, which means you don't have to worry about trying to figure out which way to orient it. But if you actually look on a lot of the drive cages, it's going to have an arrow telling you which telling you which uh, way that it needs to face on the drive. Uh, sometimes it'll have an arrow saying top, but I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, as long as the label on the drive, so the solid state, the label will be facing up. Just keep that in mind. So when you take out take apart your laptop and you notice the you can see the bottom of the drive that means the label needs to face upwards when you're holding it like this otherwise downwards so let's go ahead and get the drive out now what i like to do is i like to just put the screws next to the correct corresponding drive portion uh just because sometimes the screw size can be different but it shouldn't matter on hard drives it, it only takes one size it's all universal uh, what i usually do is i just make it face the way it went or the face face the way it came off that way I have a better time remembering. And I pull this out, put it down, and boom, you are done. All you gotta do is grab the solid state, put in the top piece. Uh, you might have to slide it on. Yes, you do have to slide it on. So just slide it on. It doesn't look like it'll go any farther because it's got this little piece here, which will help guide you. Grab one of the screws. Now I re do recommend a magnetic bit driver. Uh, sorry, a magnetic driver. Uh, I fix its drivers are always usually magnetic and it does usually come with a magnet. This one is lost for some reason, but usually you can re-magnetize your screwdriver if it feels like it's off and you can use it for other screwdrivers. So the way to put the drive in is you wanna grab it, you want to push in the SATA connection, make sure it's lush or sorry, it's stable on the motherboard. It's, you know, it's a good connection. Uh, then what you want to do is push the first, the front of the drive in first and then push the rear in. That'll all kind of sit there. 
Now the cable is very brittle, so if you break this, you will have to order a new one. Usually laptops are pretty good at having spare parts on the internet, so you can go on eBay, even Amazon, I found some pretty good parts. Now what I do recommend doing is actually opening the laptop. Uh, we'll actually do that now just to confirm it works before you put it all back together, because I don't know if you can tell, but that's a lot of screws, guys. I don't want to have to take all those screws back out after putting them all in if the RAM doesn't work. It's very frustrating if you ever work, if you work in IT, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I always make it face up with the way that the, um, power adapter is uh, you guys can't see me pointing to it but it's it's there and what we want to do is grab the power adapter uh, f2 i believe for acer i could be wrong i actually don't know i think it's maybe escape i don't know it's trying to boot into something i think windows 11 was on this drive which is odd because it shouldn't even support windows 11 but hey it works the ram's working so we can go ahead and shut it down so now what we got to do is we got to clone the drive but i'm obviously not going to record that if you guys want to know how to clone a drive to a solid state let me know in the comments below and i will be sure to do that it's a very simple task Alrighty, now that we got the computer back on its back and we confirm that the ram is working we're going to go ahead and put the top panel back on this will be another time lapse because that's a lot of screws and there's like three more over here i mean you know acer's got to put a thousand screws in here and if you guys need Work on your laptops. Uh, obviously, shipping would need to be done because I'm here in Vermont. However, if you guys want to check it out, check out Vermont Computing in the description below. We do repair laptops. We do do builds as well. And who knows, your laptop or device might end up on a video and you can get a shout out. Now, when putting clips back in, you just want to confirm that it's all clipped. What I usually like to do is I like to rotate the laptop and push in on them. Now, if they don't clip, it's probably because the clip is either broken. Uh, if the screws will fix that, don't worry. Um, and then you want to check each side. It looks like this is all clipped in. Uh, make sure that you see how the uh, got a little bit of a lip there. It's because I did not put it in on right. This is a very common problem with these laptops. As you can see, it's starting to crack there. I think it was already cracking from the get-go. But So all you got to do is go ahead and remove the bottom panel. Now what you want to do is, you really should do this in the first place. I probably should have mentioned this. But since all the I.O. is on this side, you want to put the I.O. side in first and not the side where the disk drive is on. Obviously, as you can see, all the I.O. is now lined up and perfectly seated. Now for the fun part, putting 800,000 screws back in. I will see you guys in about two years. 2,000 years later. Well, guys, as you can see, the laptop is all put back together. I confirmed it worked. I didn't do it on screen because there is, you know, sensitive data on the laptop and all that fun stuff. So that's how you disassemble an Acer Aspire. I do have it pulled up on a computer. Hold on. That is how you pull apart an Acer Aspire ES1711P1UV. Or just the Acer Aspire 711. I believe it's like, yeah, ES1711. So something like that. So if you guys like this video, drop a like. If you guys did not enjoy the video, please drop a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and especially if you guys are coming back. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next video. Peace out.